So today we've got two readings to take care of in 7th grade social studies. Um, if you look at step one for your lesson for the day, it says we're reading Playing by the Rules and Antitrust Laws. Let's go ahead and take care of Playing by the Rules. FTC Fact Sheet Playing by the Rules. Most businesses compete fair and square. They're tough competitors, but they don't try to cheat the system or the consumer. Once in a while, though, businesses might decide to try to beat the system in ways that break the law. For example, they might try unfairly to keep other competitors out of the market or work together with a competitor to make more money or corner the market. Illegal practices harm consumers. Prices go up and there are fewer choices. The FTC keeps its ear to the ground and investigates when it suspects one of these practices, taking action in court to stop illegal business practices when necessary. Every contest needs rules, and the antitrust laws are the rules of the competitive marketplace. The FTC enforces anti the antitrust laws to promote competitive markets and protect consumers from harmful business practices. Here are some examples of business practices that may break the law. A monopoly is when one company has control over an entire market, like the trusts did over steel and oil. It's not illegal to have a monopoly. It is illegal to use unreasonable methods to get a monopoly. For example, if your competitor goes out of business because you sell better stuff at better prices with better service, that's fair enough. But you can't sabotage your competitor's store to put them out of business. That would count as an unreasonable method and you'd be breaking the law. Price fixing is another thing we need to be aware of. Price fixing occurs when competing sellers agree on what to charge. Take the example of three companies that made shoes. They got together to agree on a price for the shoes. They'd supply to shoe stores and prices went up, but these shoemakers got caught and ended up paying some hefty fines. Companies can get in serious trouble for price fixing. Fines, probation, even jail. It's no joke. Supply restrictions happen when competitors agree with each other to sell fewer products. That creates a shortage and drives up prices. Customer allocation agreements are when competitors agree to divide up customers, maybe by geographic area, so that means where you live. For example, they might say, you take all the customers east of the Mississippi River and I'll take the customers west of the Mississippi. This reduces and may even eliminate competition, and that's illegal. Business owners who make these kind of agreements can face heavy fines or possible jail time. Things to talk about and do. Imagine you are the only shoe store in town and that you got there by taking over all of the shoe stores one by one. Now you have no local competition. Is this good for your business? Think about the reasons why no competition might not be good for your business. Do you have pressure to keep prices down? To keep high quality shoes and a variety of styles? To give good customer service? After all, you're the only game in town right? If your store has higher prices, less selection, poor quality, and not great service, what other options do, do consumers have? Among all of these illegal practices, which do you think would be most likely to make your company the most money in the short term? What about the long term? Why? So that's the end of our Playing by the Rules reading. We're going to go back to today's lesson and go ahead and click on the Antitrust Laws reading. FTC Fact Sheet, Antitrust Laws, A Brief History. Once upon a time, way back in the 1800s, there were, there were several giant businesses known as trusts. They controlled whole sections of the economy, like railroads, oil, steel, and sugar. Two of the most famous trusts were U.S. Steel and Standard Oil. They were monopolies that controlled the supply of their product, as well as their price. With one company controlling an entire industry, there was no competition and the smaller businesses and people had no choices about from whom to buy. 
prices went through the roof, and quality didn't have to be a priority. This caused hardship and threatened the new American prosperity. While the rich, trust-owning businessmen got richer and richer, the public got angry and demanded the government take action. President Theodore Roosevelt busted, or broke up, many trusts by enforcing what became known as an antitrust law. The goal of these laws was to protect consumers by promoting competition in the marketplace. The U.S. Congress passed several laws to help promote competition by outlawing unfair methods of competition. The Sherman Act is the nation's oldest antitrust law. Passed in 1890, it makes it illegal for competitors to make agreements with each other that would limit competition. So, for example, they can't agree to set a price for a product. That would be price fixing. The act also makes it illegal for a business to be a monopoly if that company is cheating or not competing fairly. Corporate executives who conduct their business that way could wind up paying huge fines and even maybe go to jail. The Clayton Act was passed in 1914. With the Sherman Act in place and trust being broken up, business practices in America were changing. But some companies discovered merging as a way to control prices and competition. Oh, prices and production instead of forming trusts. Competitors united to a single company. The Clayton Act helped protect American consumers by stopping mergers or acquisitions that are likely to stifle competition. With the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC Act, in 1914, Congress created a new federal agency to watch out for unfair business practices and gave the Federal Trade Commission the authority to investigate and stop unfair methods of competition and deceptive practices. Today, the Federal Trade Commission's, or FTC's, Bureau of Competition and the Department of Justice's Antitrust Division enforce these three core federal antitrust laws. The agencies talk to each other before opening any investigation to decide who will investigate the facts and work on any case that might be brought. But each agency has developed expertise in certain industries. Every state has antitrust laws, too. They are enforced by each state's attorney general. There's an office in your state capital that helps consumers or businesses who might be hurt when businesses don't compete fairly. Antitrust laws were not put in place to protect competing businesses from aggressive competition. Competition is tough, and sometimes businesses are going to fail. That's the way it is in competitive markets, and consumers benefit from the rough-and-tumble competition among sellers. So now you're going to go back to today's reading or assignment and finish up for the day. Make sure you've completed everything before you hit that submit button. If, as always, if you have questions, shoot me a call or shoot me an email.